that you chose to join us tonight for our Rain Women online service. Listen, whether you're in a C group, our connect groups, and you're gathered around with friends, or maybe you're at home by yourself and you're checking us out, or even you might be at the gym on the treadmill and you're trying to distract your mind, we are so thankful that you've joined us tonight. And listen, 
Not sure if you know, but this year at Rain Women, we've been in a series called Layers. And so if you haven't seen our other um, videos, our other messages, I encourage you to check it out. You can do that on the app or on YouTube, just to see what God's doing in us and through us right here at Rain Women. So hopefully you check those out. And so tonight we're going to go ahead and dive back into our Layers series. You know, if you think about it, our lives are actually made up of layers. It's layers of moments and layers of experiences that build one upon another to make a story. Because everyone has a very unique story. Can I get an amen? No one is exactly like you. No one has experienced the experiences just like you. No one has had the identical moments that you have had in your life. And so you have a very unique and beautiful story. You know, when I think about all the moments, all the experiences, you know, especially after salvation, but even the ones that led up to my salvation, I have this one desire. And I really believe that each one of you have that same desire is the goal, like the end result. I want to look more like Jesus. I want more of him and I want less of me. Um, but to be honest, there can be a catch and that can be a little tricky. You know, I think about it, you know, me and my love for the known. Okay, my love for the comfortable things, my love for the memorable, the familiar things, you know, those things can actually hinder me from going where God wants me to go or from doing what he wants to do in me and through me. Do you relate to me? You know, sometimes I can just get like, oh, this feels like a safe place in my life. That next thing, I just don't know, that kind of seems scary, but we can't stay where we are. And so tonight, that's what we're gonna talk about. And so how do we make sure we are going where he wants us to go and doing what he wants us to do? Because really, as a believer, our life is not our own. What does the scripture say? Like, we lose our life so that we could gain our life. Because if we try to keep our life, we're going to lose our life. And so, how do we make sure we're going where he wants us to go and doing what he wants us to do? The first thing I want to talk to you about tonight is don't get stuck looking back. Don't get stuck looking back. One of my favorite verses in, in the scriptures like has just spoke volumes to my life, volumes to my spirit and my heart over years, is Genesis 19.26. It says, But Lot's wife from behind him looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. <laughs> you may say, oh, Why? Does that verse speak so much to you? You know, when I first, as a new believer, when I read this scripture, I was like, gosh, that seems like so harsh. Like, you know, when I look at the word looked, and I've actually shared this scripture several times before, but I'm going to do it again. Okay, I'm going to share it again. Because this, this was reality in my life. When I read this verse, you know, here it was, God sent someone to warn Lot and pull him out of Sodom, and Gomorrah before he destroyed it. And so he was sparing their lives, and the angel told Lot, listen, run, run, take your family and go, but do not look back. When you hear the craziness, the destruction, don't look back. And so I read the scripture, but Lot's wife from behind him looked back. I think of like, you know, taking a peek, like, Think about it. You hear crazy things. What happens? Your kids. You hear craziness coming from your kid's room. What you going to do? You're going to look, okay? You're going to go check it out. And so this is utter craziness, destruction behind you. And I picture looked as like a, you know, oh my God, let me see what's going on, you know? Um, but this word in the Hebrew doesn't mean that. The word looked means that she longed for she longed for this place that God was delivering her from. She longed for this place of destruction that God was saving her from. 
and she became a pillar of salt. You know, I think how many times in my life that God has tried to move me from my past, but I just longed for what was back there. It's not necessarily bad things. You know, it might be good things. And the Lord is like, hey, those things are no more. Okay, and so if you want to move forward in your life, if you want to stay on this path that I have for you, if you want to stay in the journey that I have designed and dedicated for your life, Cindy, you're going to have to let go, let go of what's behind you and look forward. You know, this um, one night I was kind of just struggling, you know, and and it was struggling and looking back because there was something behind me that I was really having trouble letting go. And we were watching one of our favorite uh, TV shows. Bark and I love to watch these TV series because like we get caught up in the family. That family becomes our family, you know? Um, but this line was said, and look, God can speak through a donkey. He can speak through blue blood. So let me just tell you. <laughs> But this line was spoken, and it was the Lord speaking directly to my heart. Stop focusing on what you don't have and look to what you do have. And I was like, wow. The Lord's just saying, Cindy, if you keep focusing on what you don't have, you're going to miss what you do have. And not only that, you're going to miss what I want you to have. And can I say this? Listen, I'm not saying you can never look back. You know, it's great to look back with a heart of gratitude. It's great to look back to learn. Oh my gosh, how many times I will look back and said, well, I'm not going to do that again, or I'm not going to say that again. So we can look back with gratitude, you know, thinking also, how do you look back with gratitude? I'll look back and say, oh my God, thank you that I'm not like that anymore. Okay. But um, you can look back for understanding. You look back for revelation. You know, sometimes things stir in us like, you know, some yucky things. Maybe I'll respond in a negative way. And so I'll look back and think, God, why am I responding like that? Sometimes God takes me back to a place. Why? To reveal to me what is really what this action, where it's coming from, okay? And so we look back to understand, we look back for, for revelation, but we should not look back to linger in guilt, to linger in shame, to linger in condemnation, because all of those things are from the enemy, okay? We also shouldn't look back to stay in sorrow, okay? The Lord wants us to be able to get up. He wants to be able to bring us healing from whatever has happened in the past. And I want to just challenge you on this. If we stay looking back, if we get stuck looking back, we're probably going to fall into discontentment. And that's a very dangerous place to be. And so why well, I want to encourage you in all of this, our past can be tricky sometimes. I'm not going to get into all that. But listen, we've got to allow the Lord to lead us in that process. Okay? Allow Him to reveal the things that He wants to reveal. And why does He reveal things that's deep down, you know, maybe hidden in our lives or things that are in our past? Why does He reveal it? He reveals it in His time so He can bring healing to us. And also he reveals it in his time so he can pull those things out of us. He can pull those roots out of us so we won't be living in that and in that way anymore. So again, be careful. Don't get stuck looking back because where you look, you will go. The second thing I want to talk tonight about is don't get distracted looking to the right or the left. Okay, don't get distracted looking to the right or the left, that was your right and my left, okay? Because technically it's the right or the left. I may be dexterous, y'all. I have issues with that. Oh, what do I mean by that? You may say, what are you talking about? You have to know what you should be paying attention to, okay? So listen, when I say don't look to the right or look to the left, you know, or right or left, whatever, whatever it is, okay? Just you, you know, others is our mission, 
okay? We need to be others-minded. We need to be thinking of others. We need to be reaching others, okay? But we've got to be careful that we don't get distracted by what shouldn't be distracting us. And so we need to learn from others. We need to glean from others. We need to invest into others, but we can't let it distract us from where we need to be, from where we need to be going, from what our focus needs to be. And so we just have to be careful that we keep our heart in the right place. We just need to keep our heart in the right place. And you know, I think of Mary and Martha, the word distracted is actually the word that Jesus used to Martha. You know, we always talk about Martha, how she was busy, she was doing all the work, and then she saw Mary sitting there. In Martha's eyes, she was thinking, Mary, you're doing nothing. You need to help me. But then Mary's like, Jesus, wanted to be the feet of Jesus, you know? What I love was Mary, wasn't distracted by Martha. Martha was over there doing all this work, good things, but Mary knew where she needed to be. And so we just need to always, and how do we know that? It's by hearing the voice of God. And so just be aware that even good things can distract us sometimes. You know, I think of um, Hurricane Katrina hit our state and the that was in 2005. And I, my seventh child was seven weeks old at the time. And we had damage at our house. We had trees down in the yard, like literally my yard, we have an acre lot. It looked like a jungle, like literally looked like a jungle. And so because of relief work, my husband, he was only home for maybe the first 36 hours after the storm. And then after that, like I was doing a lot of the cleanup, you know? And so anyway, we had a shelter. We were running a shelter. People from New Orleans were in that shelter and just all the ministry that was going on, just beautiful things going on. And there I was at home with seven children cleaning up raking leaves, burning limbs, you know, and just doing that work there at my house. And I remember in my heart, you know, I would get phone calls from ministry friends saying, oh my God, listen to what God is doing. God is using this tragedy to just reach so many loss and look what he is doing. And I'm going, oh wow, praise God, praise God glad you're there. Praise God. And on the inside, as soon as I hang up, I'm like, and here I am raking leaves, changing diapers, nursing a baby, and taking care of kids. <laughs> you know, I was just so irritated on the inside because what God was doing through others was distracting me from where I really needed to be because I needed to be where I was. And so that's what I want to encourage you with. Just know where you're supposed to be. Know where you're supposed to be and be okay with that because discontentment can easily creep in. So we need to be very careful, even if everything that's going on around us, all of our friends are doing these great things, great works of God, and we feel like maybe our work isn't as significant or we, you know, can fall into, you got to be careful because you can fall into a discontented state of wanting to be doing what your friend is doing, wanting to be doing what this group is doing. But here God's like, hello, if you don't do what I'm calling you to do, who is going to do it? And maybe in that time, you know, I know in that moment that Katrina cleanup wasn't just I was taking care of the kids. It wasn't just I was getting the house in order so my husband could have a place of rest so he could go out and do these crazy, amazing things. But God was doing a work right here. And that was a huge work. That the Lord, if he hadn't done that work in me and pulled that thing out of me, I wouldn't be where I am today. So be very careful, and that's just what I'm encouraging you with on that. You know, we can also learn from the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 12. Starting in verse 7, he says, Because of the extraordinary greatness of the revelations, think about the revelations that God gave the Apostle Paul. Amazing revelations. He says, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, 
a messenger of Satan to torment. That word torment also means beat me, to keep me from exalting myself. I can tell you, <laughs> raking those leaves during Katrina, this is what God was doing. <laughs> God was like, you know what? You have a little bit too much of you in you, and I want to get that out. I want you to be more me focused. I love that. Verse eight, concerning this, I pleaded with the Lord three times that might leave me. But this is what God spoke to him. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about or in my weaknesses, in insults, in mistreatment, okay? He, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, mistreatment, in distress, in persecutions, in difficulties on behalf of Christ for when I am weak, then I am strong. This is what we need to focus on. Can I ask you this? Is his grace sufficient for you? Is he enough? Remember, where you look, you will go. And the third and last point is look forward. Look forward. You know, I love this passage in Philippians 3. It's actually labeled in my Bible, the goal of life. I'm like, hey, that's like the goal of life. I need to hear this. I want to know what it says. And I love it. Paul actually, before it, leading up to verse um, 12, he's talking about himself. And he's actually boasting in the accomplishments, the things that he did in the flesh. And honestly, if anyone could boast, okay, it could be him. And he actually says this, if any could boast in the flesh, it could be me. But then he goes back, he says, man, I can't even boast in the flesh. I love in verse 12, he says, not that I have already grasped it all or have already become perfect, but I press on if I may also take hold of that for which I was even taken hold of by Christ Jesus. He presses on. Verse 13, he says, brothers and sisters, I do not regard myself as having taken hold of it yet. Here is the apostle Paul. He's like, hey, I'm not done. God is still doing a work in me. I'm still having to press on. I'm not done yet. I haven't arrived. I'm not there yet. He says, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind. Okay, he's not getting stuck looking back. Okay, forgetting what lies behind. And he's reaching forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. That word press on actually means to make, to run, to run swiftly or to pursue. Get the visual on that. This is actually what he is encouraging us to do with a father. Looking ahead, to look forward means to Run swiftly, to run fast, to run forward, okay? To pursue, to go after the one that is worthy to go after. And that is Jesus. I love, you know, it says the upward call of God. That actually means it's actually a divine invitation to know the salvation of God, to know him. That is the upward call. That is what we should be pursuing. And so what else, what does that look like to pursue God? We see in 1 Timothy 6, verse 11 and 12, it says, pursue righteousness, godliness. To pursue godliness means those things that, you know, the character of God, that's what we should be pursuing. Faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. He says, fight the good fight of faith, Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called. This is what we should be pursuing. And so I'll leave you with this. Instead of spending your time or energy fighting the wrong things, spend it pursuing and fighting the right things and watch the difference this will make in your life. I've seen the difference it's made in my life. And listen, 
I don't want you to think, oh, well, you know, you're a pastor and it's easy for you. Hey, I don't get this right every day. Every day I have to choose to say the right thing, to do the right thing, to pursue the right one. Every day I have to choose to fight the good fight. And so I want to encourage you, if I can do it, you can do it too. God has called you to this and you can do it. Remember, whatever you focus on, you move towards. So just make sure, don't get stuck looking back. Don't get distracted looking to the right or the left, but look forward. Where you look, you will go. Focus on pleasing the Lord. Focus on being like Him and just sit back and watch the difference He'll make in your life. Look, I'm so glad that you joined us. Listen, I want to encourage you to um, make sure you join us again. Wednesday, September 13th is the second Wednesday. We're going to be back here for our Rain Women online service. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be a great night. Um, I'm actually going to have some other women with me, and they're going to speak wisdom and encouragement into your life. So you want to make sure you tune in for that September 13th. And listen, I'm going to end with a question tonight, something for you to think about. You remember in the beginning, I said all of our goal, our goal of life should be to have more of him, to look more like Jesus and to have less of us in our life. Okay, so I ask you this, in this layer of your life, where is God wanting you to go? What is God wanting you to do? What is he speaking to you right now? Whatever it is, if you don't know what it is, I encourage you, ask him. He'll show you what it is. And whatever that is, press on towards it. Pursue it and just watch God do miraculous things in you. God bless. Love you.